What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Happy Tuesday to all of you. I'm going to be breaking down this two game NBA slate here for Tuesday night. We got the Heat versus the Knicks and we got the Lakers versus Golden State. The two good games. Can't wait to watch both of them, especially that Lakers game should be fun to watch uh, with a lot of interesting matchups. But yeah, I'll be doing a game by game breakdown, talking through some of my favorite early look for plays as well as who to target, who to kind of leave off your board, all that good stuff. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Do really appreciate all the support on these videos recently. Uh, if we get to 40 likes on this video, that'd be huge. Make sure to check out my price fix video after this, and let's get into the breakdown. So a quick little recap yesterday. I made two lineups. Uh, the core plays for me yesterday were um, I went to, with Booker, Melton, uh, Durant, and Horford, and they all did, you know, solid. You know, Booker went for 51, Melton went for 27, Durant went for 44, Al Horford went for 28. So just a solid core. Uh, Brogdon. Had a huge first half there, but did, didn't do too much in the second half. Um, this one didn't cash, but the other one did cash. Uh, Jamal Murray was obviously got awful. I think um, Durant shot 10 and 27. I think Jamal Murray was like 1 of 15, 3 of 15. Uh, yeah, Bruce Brown was not good as well. And then Robert Williams didn't like that pick. It, it just kind of highlighted on my lineup with that. Here's the one that did cash, though. One with Bruce Brown, Booker, Melton. Uh, Tobias Harris, Jokic, Maxi. So I added more of the, the 76ers guys into this one with Maxi and Harris there. Uh, went obviously paid up for Jokic there. I uh, had to pay down for a cheap forward. It was McDaniels. He got me one point there, but still was able to cash even with that. And Brogdon was fine. So yeah, those were the picks yesterday. One cashed, one didn't. Uh, and for today, as we can see here for the Heat Knicks game, um, pretty gross total, 206, 206 and a half, six and a half points spread favored to the Knicks right now. And then for the Lakers game, it's a four and a half point spread favor to the Warriors, a 228 game total. So we can see second game are looking a lot juicier in terms of matchups and just fancy point production and potential. So I'm, I'm assuming most people will kind of, you know, lean towards that game. But we shouldn't overlook this first game here. So for this Miami game, the big news there is obviously Jimmy Butler. He hurt his ankle there in the late in the fourth quarter of the last game. Still managed to uh, be out there for the last three minutes, but he really sat in the corner and could really not do much. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he plays today. If he does, how, uh, you know, I guess flexible, how much uh, push he has in that ankle, uh, if he's, you know, back to normal Jimmy. Uh, so that's kind of the big risk there, that if he is good to go, like we don't know how badly that ankle is. I'm assuming if he plays, he's going to be fine. But there is that risk. Uh, so I think that'd make him more of a contrarian spend up. Uh, just because of that ankle injury. Um, but if he's out, let's just go through. If he's out, obviously Bam out of is going to take a huge leap in offensive production. Same thing with Vincent. Same thing with Struess. I'm assuming they'll probably start Kevin Love. They'll throw maybe Martin in there as well. I mean, it, it's going to get spread out. Obviously, the big dogs would probably be Bam and Vincent. Um, and then if Lowry, you know, started or came off the bench, he'd be one like the third big dog. But yeah, it'd be spread out to everyone. Uh, at least three or four guys from this team would look fine. Obviously, there'd be some blow-up risk there not having Jimmy, uh, but you'd want to get at least three or four pieces with Bam and um, Vincent leading the way there as kind of the main guys if there is no Jimmy. Now, if there's Jimmy, um, then I'd say Bam is more of a contrarian play. Same thing with Jimmy. Uh, Vincent's been very, very uh, aggressive offensively the past three games. It, it looks like maybe Coach Spo told him he needs to be aggressive offensively. I mean, 12 three-point attempts in the past two games. Um, I mean, he's been playing 30-plus minutes the past three basically games as well. So he, he looks like a, a decent player there at 5,300. He's been very uh, – he's not been shooting the ball great, but, I mean, he's getting a ton of attempts, and he's seen 30-plus minutes. So I think Vincent looks pretty solid there. Martin, uh, more of just kind of a filler play there. You know, he, if Jimmy's out, obviously I'd like him a lot more. Uh, but with Jimmy most likely in as of right now, um, I think he's just a fine filler play there. A guy that can do a little bit of everything. Kyle Lowry, um, it's one of those things. I, I think he's a solid play there at 4,900. I'm super pissed because I had him in my lineup last game, and then I took him out for quickly. And, of course, Kyle Lowry goes for, uh, like, a 50 bomb. It's just annoying there. But, yeah, I mean, they're going to need his offense here in this game. Uh, so I do like him at 4,900 still. Uh, as he, I think he's a solid play there. Struess, I'd like him a lot more if there's no Jimmy. If there is Jimmy, uh, Struess is a fine play. He did get limited there to 23 minutes. They, can, they just kind of go with a hot hand. So he is definitely risky there. Once again, more of a filler play. Kevin Love. I think Kevin Love is a fine play. Um, I don't know what Coach Spo is doing. If you guys follow me on Twitter, I I, I, just, I was ranting because 
they need Kevin Love. They need his production. They need his ability to throw, throw the ball up the court. And what did we see? So in the first half, Kevin Love had a solid first shift. Did not play a minute in the second quarter. He played like six or seven first half minutes in the first quarter. Did not play the rest of the quarter. Did not play the rest of the quarter for the first. Did not play the entire second quarter. They went to Dusty Cody Zeller. Why? Why, Coach Spo? You guys were down because of that. And then, of course, Kevin Love, they start him in the third quarter. What happens? They go they go on like a 20-4 to four run because of Kevin Love. Kevin Love like had like four or five possessions in a row where he threw the ball up the whole court leading to easy buckets and baskets for Jimmy. He literally, Kevin Love was the sole reason why they got that lead. They got up to an eight-point lead. They were down like six and a half. They got up to an eight-point lead within the first seven minutes strictly because of Kevin Love. So I don't know why we're playing Cody Zeller. It makes no sense. But yeah, as you guys can tell, I think Kevin Love's a very solid play there. I would like him even more, obviously, if there's no Jimmy. Uh, I mean, his minutes, he's probably going to be capped at like 25. Uh, I think that's kind of what we can expect, anywhere from like 18 to 25. But I think he's a solid play there, 4,700. Duncan, uh, more of a risky play there, kind of like a Struce. And then, obviously, they threw in Cody Zeller for a bit, but don't need to go there. And that's what it is. Um, it's just kind of more a wait-and-see approach for the Miami side there. So not much we can do as of right now. On the next side, kind of the same thing. Brunson uh, randomly got an ankle injury. Not really sure where that came from. Um, and then, obviously, Julius Randle has been out the past game and a half. So those are the two huge, huge news. Two big pieces of news for obvious reasons because these two are pretty much the whole team. They're 98% of the team. Other part is 1% Barrett and then 1% the other guys. So do we have to wait for the news here? I'm assuming Jalen Brunson is good to go. I, I think the question mark is just Julius Randle. I think Brunson 8,400 is a solid play there. Obviously, he priced up a little bit more, uh, but I think he's still a solid play. Should have, lead the team in minutes, usage, everything. So I think he's still a strong play, 8,400. Randall, if he's good to go, I'm assuming there's no uh, limits. We'd have to obviously keep an eye out on that. But at 6,900, I'd really like him. Um, it's just how limited is he with that ankle? Uh, he was finally getting back to normal. You know, he was shooting terribly. Uh, he had an okay first game. Still didn't shoot the ball well there versus Cleveland. And then he kind of dropped off there in terms of production. And then started to find it there in that, that last game. Was absolutely smashing. Uh, was getting close to 30 fantasy points in the first half. Obviously hurt his ankle. Did not come back. So he's definitely a risky play there, but I love the price tag. If he's good to go, he should be super aggressive. So I think he would be a very solid play. If there's no... Uh, excuse me, if there's no Randall, Barrett, look, once again, looks like a fine play. Now, he did get priced up. He was great last game, but him and Brunson should lead, lead, the teams in, lead the team in terms of usage. Hart would be more viable. You know, he'd stay in the starting lineup. He's playing just mass amount of minutes, so it's like, we know Hart at times is just not productive, um, but it's still, it's one of those things where he's playing like 40 plus minutes. So at 5,900, I still think he's a very solid play. Mitch Robinson would be more in the, uh, in line there to be a better play if there is no Randall. Uh, we know you know Mitch Robinson will see 30 plus minutes with no uh, Randall, and he has a ton of rebounding opportunities. He's been great at getting blocked. So Mitch Robinson is still a fine play there, even if Randall was in. But I like him a lot more if there's no Randall. Toppin should start if there's no Randall. He was solid that last game, so I wouldn't mind going back to him at 5,000. Now if there is Randall, Toppin would back to the bench. Wouldn't like Toppin at all there at 5,000. Quickly, if there's Randall. Um, quickly, just more of a, a dart throw play, 4,600. Um, if there is no Randall, I do like quickly a decent amount at 4,600. He was god awful last game. Didn't get into like the two minute mark in the first quarter. Um, they're kind of riding the starters for a long time. Um, and obviously he did not shoot the ball well, three of nine, but we know he is upside there. If he's, you know, hitting the shots, he can get you into mid twenties fancy points. So he's a solid play at 4,600. If there's no Randall, more of a GPP dart throw. If there is Randall in Hartenstein. Um, you can always take a shot at him, even if there's Randall. I mean, we know if Mitchell Robinson gets into some foul trouble, Hardenstein can go out there and get some minutes. Uh, he's decently productive, but he's just there. And Quentin Grimes um, only played 10 minutes. I'd like him a decent amount if there is no Randall. If there is Randall, Quentin Grimes, there's really no need to get to him. You can take a dart throw on him. Maybe he comes in and hits some shots, but they didn't really look to him last game, even without Randall. So for that reason, more of a stay away from me as of right now. For this Lakers game here, um, it'll be interesting to see how they match up with the Warriors. I'm not really sure how it's going to go. Uh, I think the key matchup, obviously, is going to be either... I'm not sure who's going to be guarding uh, Anthony Davis 
whether that's um, Von Looney or whether that's going to be um, Draymond Green. I think that's kind of the key, whoever regards Anthony Davis, if he's going to be super aggressive or if he's going to be timid, it's going to come down to Anthony Davis to being the key to, you know, making this a series and possibly the Lakers winning. Um, so in terms of the two guys at the top, LeBron, Anthony Davis, both look fantastic as defensive plays. If I had to lean towards one, it'd probably be Anthony Davis. He's just been a little bit more consistent recently. But yeah, they both look great. Uh, Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell look very appealing in this mid-range just because of the minutes. Like Austin Reeves is kind of the third option. Like He's playing huge minutes. Uh, if that game didn't blow out, he probably would have played close to 40 minutes. So he's playing close to 40 minutes. He's going to shoot the ball 10 plus times. He's good at getting assists, getting rebounds, and he can score and hit down shots. So it's like, as you can see, three straight games of 34 or more fantasy points. I'm expecting big minutes for Austin Reeves, so I do really like him there at that price tag at 6000 And then at 5800 we know the upside there with D'Angelo Russell. He, now he does get limited at times. He is very hot and cold, but he did get 44 and a half fantasy points there. Uh, had a great game shooting the ball, 31 points. Um, so yeah, I mean, even if he's not shooting the ball great, he can still get you mid thirties just with playmaking. So I think another very solid play who should see about 30 minutes, if not more. Uh, Rui, I think should be a decent play there. 4,500, uh, his production really dropped off, um, just in terms of like rebounding and scoring the last two games, last three games. But we saw the upside there in the first three games. I went for 29, 20 and 16. So I think he's definitely worth a look in GPP plays. I've been about more of a dart throw. I mean, sure, he can get you there. 3900 is a cheap price tag, but don't feel great about it. But they will need his defense, so maybe he plays it a tad more minutes. But I think he's still a risky play, but a decent play. And then Schroeder uh, played 23 minutes. I think he's another punt play, kind of like a Vanderbilt, where it's like if you need some salary relief, they're kind of the two best options who are the cheapest uh, in terms of price tag. Um, but they haven't been too productive, but I think they look fine. And then moving on to Golden State, Finally, I finally got the Steph Curry game I've been asking for for like five games, uh, a 50 bomb. So that was great there. It was fantastic to see that. Uh, it was fun to watch. But yeah, 9-9, nine, nine, a price did come up. I think he's more of just a solid play now. We'll be interested to see how they kind of handle Steph because he's been the whole team for the Warriors recently. Uh, but still a solid play there. I do like Andrew Wiggins a good amount. Price tag did come up. Uh, he just kind of hit a shot there. Uh, missed every free throw. Missed a few layups there at the end of the game. So it's like he could have had a very solid game uh, fantasy point-wise, but he just couldn't get anything going in that fourth quarter. Uh, just missing wide-open layups and rebounds. It, it was making no sense. But, yeah, I think he's still a strong play. Same thing with Clay Thompson. He's been god-awful over the past two games, 8-20 to 20 in game six when everyone was all over him, and then 4-19 of 19 that last game. I mean, it, still, I, I, it's still solid that he got 20-plus fantasy points, even though he shot terrible. Um it's one of those, I don't mind landing on him because if this game is close, it's most likely going to be due to Clay and Steph uh, scoring the ball. Uh, so I do like him a good amount here at 6,800. I think he's a solid play, a nice bounce back spot opportunity for him. Von Looney, I think he's a little bit of out of price uh, for me in this matchup. It was a way better matchup for Sabonis because he could sag off of him and get easy rebounds. Um, and just Sabonis was just not a good box. We're not good at boxing out were really any energy at all trying to stop Kevon Looney. So Looney obviously thrived. Um, but now he's going against Anthony Davis, who will be out on the wing, who will be out on a three-point line at times, if that's who he's guarding. And so it will draw Looney away from the basket. So I don't like his rebound opportunities as much as I did in this past series against the Kings. And for that reason, I think I'm going to take a more wait-and-see approach with him. It's 6700 almost 7000 If I'm paying that price tag, I'd rather have the upside of Clay Thompson and Wiggins. Uh, and there is huge foul trouble with Looney if he does guard Anthony Davis. So right now, not going to go to Looney. I do like Draymond Green, but there is that chance he gets in uh, foul trouble or tries to uh, you know, take LeBron out or Anthony Davis out and gets ejected. But if he's in, out of foul trouble, he should see close to 40 minutes. So I, I do like him there at 6,500. Kind of the engine of this team. I think Poole's an interesting uh, play off the bench at 5,200. Um, more of a GPB play. DiVincenzo, I don't know what to do with these you know, guards. DiVincenzo randomly got uh, pretty much just at, got axed from the starting lineup that last game. Only played eight minutes. They went to Moody. They went to Gary Payton for a little bit. And they went to, um, I thought they went to someone else. It was, no, it was just pretty much Poole, Gary Payton, and Moody. And that was it. They sprinkled a little bit of Dante DiVincenzo in there. But 
not enough to feel great about it. So right now, I guess the only one I'd like off the bench obviously would be Pool, maybe Gary Payton. I mean, they use him at times, so uh, that's about it. Gary Payton kind of more. I, I honestly think I'd favor Gary Payton over a Schroeder or Vanderbilt, even though his minutes aren't as secure. Um, and he's not as good offensively as like a Schroeder, but it, it's just one of those things like he can go out there and get you four or five steals in a game in like 15 minutes. Um, easy pay off his price tag. So if you want a dart throw, I think he'd probably be my favorite dart throw on the board as of right now. So that is it for the breakdown as of right now. Um, as I mentioned, I, I do like this Warrior side for obvious reasons. Uh, I think I'm going to throw Clay in there as of right now as an early look for play. And then for a spend up, we'll just get to, we'll get to Anthony Davis. Obviously, you kind of have to wait for the news there in the Miami in the Knicks game with Jimmy and Julius Randle and Jalen Brunson. So a lot of news we do have to wait for. But as of right now, these are the early little core plays. Hope you guys like the breakdown. Make sure to check out my price fix we got to this. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.